Welcome back, everybody. We we do it again. It's another week gone by. It's the state of the canyon for May the 6th. Uh, most of the week, almost the entire week, honestly, uh, was split between two projects. Uh, most people saw this big beast. And some of the people probably saw this big beast. So time was pretty well split between the Rift project and Jolly Green. Big mean Jolly Green. Uh, I definitely have more to talk to. I have more to talk about when it comes to Jolly Green. So we will we'll, we'll talk about the Rift real quick first. The Rift has proven to be fantastically fun. Uh, I am currently in the process of m making it be what I think it should be, which is some kind of hybrid between Hoon Around Basher and Rock Crawler, because it's fun to do both. So what I don't want to do is turn this thing into a pure Rock Crawler. I have plenty of those. I want something that can also, you know, be dumb. So... When we when we began this process not too long ago, it started on the Spectrum 1900 uh, KV uncensored uh, off of that Hobby Wing 120 speed control, and I hate that motor. Uh, so that was replaced by the Speed Passion Certix 2200, which, as I had mentioned in the video where it first appeared, uh, there was something deeply wrong with it. It's it's very old. And I believe it now to be dead. Like, it just... There's no... There's no resistance anymore. Like, usually... You're usually looking at about that. So what's in there now is a tiny little 3536 Outrunner, which is... It's unlikely that that is the permanent power supply. I think that motor will certainly find a home somewhere in the fleet, whether it be something already built that gets a swap or something that hasn't been built yet. Further on the topic of the Rift, I figured might as well get into the tuning a little bit. There are some other, there are some parts on the way. Let's just, let's just leave that at that. Uh, I've got axle tubes for one of the axles and I have three SSD spools because I did the I did the cost benefit analysis there and uh, if you get the little axial spool pieces and put them in the housings or replace this it ends up costing more because these are like 18 bucks a piece for the steel lockers so I think in the most in the next phase what's going to happen next is I will spool the rear I will replace the factory spool in the middle with one of the SSD spools, just because very beefcake. And the front currently has what I've determined to be 80,000 weight, 1 million centistoke. So on hand, I have two choices for the front diff. I've got Mugen, 100,000, and I've got, oh, look at this. I've got, nope. I've got associated 300,000. I think I think I can get away with 300,000. So I think we're going to go straight to 300,000 in the front. Uh, spool in the rear, new spool in the middle, 300,000. And then, then we'll get to what to do about the motor. It still astonishes me now that that little thing can move this thing, which as it sits right there in that, well, no, I'm sorry. That's not true. I haven't weighed it. When it had this in it, it was 8.994 pounds. So just call it nine pounds. And that tiny little babby of a motor moves this thing around. So it's not entirely out of the question that the, the as of yet unnamed Rift, the Rift will get a name when it gets its personality. And no, I still haven't 
messed with trying to heat that driver interior because I only get one shot at it. But I think it's an absolute imperative that I get it to work. I just have to figure out a way to apply a small amount of heat to a very small area because I feel like this has to happen. Uh, we've got the kitty. And while I was digging around in the bins, uh, I think... I think I found the co-pilot in Yarn Bear. Uh, Yarn Bear and Kitty Head, like, this has to happen. I I either need, I, I gotta do something. I have to get that interior to fit because every time I look at that, it fills me with glee. And the Rift is so fun to drive that I, this will just absolutely put it over the top. Like, I, I, I don't know if I'll be able to, to withstand... I don't know if I'll be able to handle it. It's so good. So that's where the rift sits. And now on to the the big dog in the room, Jolly Green. Those who have been paying attention can see that it now has the official TRX-6 rear fenders on it. Because, I don't know, I got to looking at it, and the look of just the bare towers on the back it didn't, I don't know, it didn't look right. And then, of course, the way these towers go, they they lock into the side skirts. So I basically just started putting stuff on. I started putting stuff on and putting stuff on. And I love the look and the layout now, kind of save for the front bumper. But I'll get to that. So then I did indeed order... A couple body options. The first of which is, as I had mentioned, I would the the the, the creeper, the J Concepts creeper, which I think, I mean, I I don't think it would be bad, honestly. I think it would be a pretty decent look. The problem is the fitment. It's very narrow, as we know, and you can't run it with side skirts. So if I were intending to run this with just the little nub towers, no big fenders, no side skirts, no sliders, this would be an option. The thing is, I really like these. I really like the look of this. And the way they give it this nice tunnel will be very easy to build a bed that goes over this. And I really want to have a big wood bed. Also, the length of the fender really lends to me cutting the back off. I'm going to cut it off. I'll, may, I'll mark that line straight across. It'll get cut off. New marks will be put in. And I don't know, I have no idea what I'm going to do for a rear bumper, but I want it to be something small. So like just a little, like maybe from there to there. Yeah. Just a little something square. I might actually just fabricate it out of whatever I can find. But this guy is going to run... I, I love these. That, that like, like To me, it almost makes the look. So I knew I would need a wider body because now it's, it's pretty wide now. So option number two was this little Vatera, which to me... I mean, is it, tw is it 12th scale? I don't know. It feels like 10th scale. I feel like it's wide enough. But there was just, like, it's so short. It's probably three quarters of an inch shorter than where I cut the already cut K10. You know, this K10. Which I think, honestly, I mean, that, that looks right. Uh, when I had initially mounted it, to Jolly Green, I had cut the bottoms of the doors down because I wanted to get it down as low as possible. Now I don't, I don't really care if it's down as low as possible. So as I stand here now saying these words, it is a 99.9% .9 chance that it will just be another K10 painted just like this, but hopefully better. Same colors, white roof, 
green, but it's going to sit up about there as it should because, like, the whole bottom of this is cut off. There should be another half inch all the way across. So I'm going to get another, maybe, maybe, no, it's, it just wants to sit down. So it'll sit up like that or maybe a little higher. And when I start with a fresh K10, I won't cut it off here. I'll cut it off back here, then fabricate an inner to mate up to the wood bed on the back, and then I think this thing will be will be fantastic. And in other notes about Jolly Green, you'll notice the other the other Traxxas servo is in. It's hooked up. It's just I've set the channel to null because it's not attached to anything in the moment. But I now have everything I need. Spool parts, the 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 two prong horn, the big shift cable, and the shorter shift cable. So I have everything required to go full lockers on here, uh, which will be that that'll be a bit of a thing. And I still have not been able to figure out how, how to two cables attach right there uh any trx6 owners out there holler out as to like how are they done because i've maybe i didn't look right but i have looked at the traxxas part number for for this guy the cradle that holds the two diff lock servos there is no special part number for the trx6 it's just the same part so i don't i don't understand how they make that work and last but not least, for Jolly Green, uh, I went ahead and got matching foams for the rears that match the front. And these are the, the basic, the lightweights that are soft. And they are a nice, like, this, this is too soft. I just used what I had. Uh, they really mush up. So, Crazy Crawler Basics. It's got Crazy Crawler, I think, HDs in the front. So... Jolly Green will be getting a thorough going over. Uh, I might put the lockers in. It depends. What it really depends on is how far do I have to pull this thing apart to cut to cut back here. Like if all this rear end has to come off for me to cut those, then absolutely I'll just I'll put the locker axles in and and we'll be good. Uh, and then the the body. The body will be ordered. Uh, I just bought two bodies, so it'll it'll be a minute or two. Uh, I will have to run off of this for a little while, which means that building the bed will not be done immediately either. As, like, I don't know how far I want the I want the this body to go to there. So I will it will be cut off right there so that it covers the battery and covers everything else. So that's the summary on this guy. But then one might say, well, now you have two bodies. What are you going to do with those? We'll start with the creep. Now we know somebody already in the fleet, already running a creep. And that is Daphne the Sport. So the intention here, as all I did was, I popped that off. I went like this. And I was like, yep. Uh, but it's not just a bolt on. Uh, Daphne, well, Velma, driving Daphne, uh, she's up too high. So the spacer will have to be remade to move her down. Luckily, it can kind of, I made it so it pivots. She needs to move down and forward so that she's kind of centered in the window. The... Speed control takes up pretty much all of the available real estate, and the receiver is back here in this box, which requires a bunch of extensions. So what I'm going to do is rebuild the battery plate, move that, so the battery will kind of sit, give me a battery. The goal is for the battery to sit right there, just like that, which I think is inside the body. I want to get the battery, yep, 
See? Just like that. So I'm going to rebuild this whole plate and have it go frame rail to frame rail. So it'll be a big wide thing. Speed control, receiver. I'll figure out what to do about the wires. They'll just be like how this piece goes down in the bend. It will just come right back up and the battery will just plop, sit right down in there, right up against the two-speed servo. Everything here on the back will be discarded and Daphne will be full truggy, just like that, basically with nothing in the back. Oh, I also have small, this is, I think, half-inch aluminum angle. So I will be building two skirts, one for either side, just that just come out to the edges of the body right there. And I'm thinking body mount probably right there. Or, oh, this just occurred to me just now. Uh, if I do like a lightning bolt shape that comes up, I can just do Velcro right there on the inside of the door, which would probably be amazing. And then if I can indeed get the battery to sit the way I want it to, the whole cab will just be solid. Like it sits pretty much exactly where I want it. I won't have to cut any tunnel out, anything. Everything will just be hidden inside this little body. And I think it will look amazing. I mean, it sits, it sits perfectly. There's a tiny bit of contact right there and that's it. So it, it will take, it'll take a fair bit of work because we're talking about relocating essentially all of the electronics. Also, while we're on that topic, Daphne the Sport is kind of the best possible candidate to slap in this age-old Mamba Max Pro, uh, update the software, and then put that outrunner that's currently in the Rift in here. Because I think that amount of torque in Daphne would be otherworldly and would also lower her CG even more. So Daphne will be a big project for the week. She will at the very least be getting the new shell that all fitted. I have to decide what color to paint her. I don't think I don't think it's going to be black this time. I think we're going to go for a, a different color for Daphne the Sport. Uh, and she might end up on an Outrunner. But, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll get to that. Which brings us to the Vatera K10, which I, I have to say, uh, it kind of bums me that it, it just isn't a good fit for uh, Jolly Green, because, man, is it cool looking. So I said, I can't have this and not use it for something. So I started digging through the bins, and this is what I've got so far. I had initially put these axial 10-2 uh, axles just on some frame rails and I threw a bottom plate on there and then I thought I have all those parts uh oh also yeah that's that's Daphne's transmission so yeah there's there's even more work for Daphne because I definitely want her to get the aluminum transmission she already has the aluminum shift mount so that this shift mount will come off because when I pull the two speed out of Daphne I will down convert that one into a single speed for this rig. Everything on this rig is kind of just a placeholder. Uh, these will not be the shocks. The springs are far too stiff. Uh, it does not have upper links in the rear yet, but I did manage to get the drive shafts to fit, uh, which requires a little bit of a, a little bit of grindage right there because uh, the 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 TRX4 uh, is definitely looking for an offset pumpkin in the front and why this got built is i set that on there just like that and i was like yep so just like that two truggies and i have this is jolly green's old radio uh it all depends on how the electronics get moved around who gets what that will determine what what will go in this 
But uh, it's going to run on Class 1s. Either these or the Bounty Hunters. Uh, might run on these wheels. Might run on different wheels. I don't know. I, I actually built the front links. Like, like, I put the body on it. Lined the axle up in the middle. And just kind of rough measured where the uh, links needed to go. And it should be great. I have nothing for it in the way of bumpers. I don't have bumper mounts. Uh, this one... This one's going to be a little more of a slow burner. It's not just going to fire together. My initial plan was just to throw the ecto on it, you know, get it, get it, get it lined up. And then I saw it and I was like, <laughs> uh, ectos and class ones, not a thing. And when I put that on there, I knew immediately. I was like, I have to, I have to build that. So there you have that. I don't know if it really shows a clear picture of what I got during, done during the week so much as it shows how much work I have. Like, it's a couple hours for each rig for sure. Uh, just to pull that rift down and get those two spools in is going to be is going to be a little while. And yes, the rift will be getting a new servo and a new shift servo, but I haven't you know, it's we're not operating on un, uh, on unlimited funds here. I'm not the United States military. I have to uh, I have to go piece by piece. And unfortunately, it feels like I'm building like four things at once. So it's going to take a little while. So as Daphne requires essentially a complete teardown. Uh, as does the rift. The rift needs to be pretty much fully disassembled. Yeah, I mean, I need all three diffs out. So, that's a thing. And uh, it kills me to take things all the way apart, uh, knowing that I have other parts that need to be replaced, but I don't have those parts yet. Because that means I just I get to take it apart again. So this is an this is not a great fitment on this uh, on this body. Uh, it is being asked to do something, but at the same time, it's not awful. I mean, it fits. Uh, the bumper sticks out way too far. Uh, I, I like I say I I think I just want like a. My temptation is to get a piece of hardwood of some kind and make a bumper that just looks like it's like made out of a 4x4, four four, like a big piece of 4x4 four four post. Get it right up here against the front, and I think that will look great. Uh, because what we're going to do right now is to, to round out this time a little. Uh, we'll, we'll cast a little light on the those fresh obstacles. Might as well. Although, uh, I gotta say, this is convenient. Uh, <laughs> so, we'll take Jolly Green out uh, for some rolling around. It both surprise. It shouldn't. Su it shouldn't surprise me as much as it does, but. The big Axe 3300 is perfect in this. So, I mean, I know what that system is for now. It, it's not for four wheels. It's for six. And let's take a look at why. I used to be able to kind of predict when those would be barking, but now uh, I think if the sun is up there barking. It doesn't really matter how loose the dirt is. Jolly Green goes where Jolly Green wants to go. I've been out here for one minute and I already had an ant walking on the broom of my hat. Like, where do they come from? Are they already in the hat? Do ants live in my hat? So this particular section over here is one that is, uh, is definitely Jolly Green approved. 
I don't know. I don't know if anyone else will be able, even be able to make it up this. But in fairness, I haven't tried. So. Oh, look at that! Nice in the, in the sun. Did they find the thumbnail? Click. Yeah, aside from the bumper, the, 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 like I never noticed before the amount of front bumper hang on this. I definitely notice it now. I think it was because I drove it that few times with no bumper on it and it just, it doesn't get caught on anything. There's no exit to this yet. This was the, this was the spot where I rolled the six by for the first time, I got really sideways right here and it just fell. I almost just did it again, I almost replicated. Oh, yeah, just like that. I did, I did it just like that. No one's driven on this yet, which is why the, uh, which is why it looks pretty good. It's not, it's not beat to hell. There is a, uh, there is a, there is a pole in the way. That's me trying to, force nature to bend nature to my will. Oh. Got, a little, got a little stuck there. Oh, there we go. Not really. Ooh. Can't move the camera and drive at the same time. Uh-oh. I, I feel like I can't. I, is there rope? Am I in rope? All right, yeah. I, I didn't, okay, no one else could have gotten out of that. I'll just say it. He spans a lot of bridge. And gets hung up even less than I thought he would. The NSDRC RS800 continues to be great. So good. I'm starting to feel like I was, I don't know, getting lazy and only hitting just the, the same obstacles over and over again. And I mean, you know, we've got a couple obstacles here, so. This is a section that for many rigs is kind of a problem. Let's uh let's let's skirt it sideways on oblivion. See what kind of holding power we have. Yeah, that look at that that middle that intermediate tire just mushed. It's not too bad changing the foams on these, but still, uh Changing foams is not something I explicitly look forward to, so. It's in the queue. I should, uh, I should whiteboard it, you know? I can't help it. I've got the perfect morning light on those rocks. Let's drive through some spider webs. If you drive in this, if you drive this course for any amount of time, you will be pulling spider webs off your stub axles, suspension links, shocks. I mean, really, Jolly Green, come on. Well, there's, that's my first proper whoopsie, I guess. Well, let's call it a whoopsie for today. The way the rear, uh, air quotes, lower links fit I don't know if it's possible for them to even come into contact with the ground. They are completely scratch free. Look at those middles just hanging. We'll get over it. Some nice low speed. Oh, I think it needs to be more the other way. Yeah, like that. I'm sure, I'm sure there's a place this can't go. And really, we're only out here to fill some time because I, uh, I built that rift and the rift is a blast, but I think about driving this thing all the time. Like, 
much. It won't catch, yeah, nothing. It won't catch anything on the way down. That thing with a little bar bumper, a little bar of a bumper, and a body that's fitted correctly. Like that body's pretty janky, and it, uh, it's still, you know, it looks, it looks all right. I like how with the folded bed down, it's got the decals on it. People are like, where'd you get that weird body that looks like that? And I'm like, well, I hit it with a heat gun and cut it too short. Because man, if this was a crew cab, it'd be perfect. Yeah, there's that knock, 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 knock. Which is purely because for whatever reason, when I converted Jolly Green to the truck initially, I was like, I need to get that body down as low as possible. I guess not realizing that that whole K10 body weighed like five ounces. The amount I cut off only took off like an ounce. It's still like four ounces now. I thought for sure it was gonna that was gonna be bad. Oh, we're looking we're looking right down this, the, the the meanest side hill here. So this, this is kind of the reason I want to change those foams is because you can kind of see the rear just folding. But at the same time, oh. Yeah, they're just, they have, they have no sidewall support. I don't think forward traction will be impacted and I mean, I think we can agree. Jolly Green has forward traction to spare. I also now understand after wheeling it here a bit, why Traxxas chose. So uh, and for anyone curious, the mid axle is at the 12.8 inch wheelbase. See, I had wondered, is it sport wheelbase or is it the long wheelbase? So it's the long wheelbase, then with the extra, I don't know, five inches of rails behind that. So it's 12.8 to the front. I haven't actually measured what the, uh, what the total wheelbase is. But they definitely did their homework, and I'm glad I didn't try to work against the homework that they did because six hunks... Six, hun six hunks will go. And this is going to try to push, push wide. No, it's not. Get that nice low speed. Yeah, that, that, the, the, what's happening is that the tires are just folding up too much on the, where all the weight is on the bottom side. But I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to keep laying into it. We'll try adjusting a little bit of steering here. That's nearly vertical. It's now using the wood. Okay, I mean, you could get closer to vertical, I guess. I'm trying to use some. Oh, I think I climbed the wall with some steer angle. Oh, hey. I mean, basically, if the bumper will clear it, this thing will try to climb it. And I had said, when I poured this out, I just want something that can climb this. And it's so close. Honestly, I think it doesn't have enough weight on the rear axle. Look at that middle tire just pouching up. One more wheel speed, one more. the other way, back the other way. Yeah, I think, I think the rear tires can be a little more firm. Oh boy, are they trying. Uh, how, how is that staying up there? I don't know. Is that the, is that the thumbnail? The tire just has to be wedged in behind the wood. That's all I can figure. That's the only way this hasn't fallen. Oh, no, 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 come on. The 
If I release throttle, it's gonna fall. And there it is. Even for a six by, which is like illegal, like should be illegal. That felt really good. I keep telling myself to straighten out the steering and then I don't do it. It, it might not look like it very much from that little angle right there, but the wheels are pointing to the right, like a, a, a fair amount. So this thing's got a good bit of pull. I don't want to sub trim it because I've got a turnbuckle for my steering link. So. Just want a more high clearance bumper. I want a new K10 that isn't haphazardly cut. I, I don't know why I thought straight down from the cab. I should have left a little, I should have left it. Well, I didn't, you know, I got anxious. I got excited. I was like, this body's already cut up. I know it fits too low. Look at the tire just rubbing away there in the front. Uh, so I'll, I'll get a do-over by spending another 40 bucks to buy another body. And the problem here is, everybody, I can do this all day. I can just go back-to-back -back battery packs, just drive it all day. You know what I might honestly try? I might try putting a full-size pack in this thing to see how it affects, because uh, ordinarily, uh, vehicles don't, crawlers don't need more weight in the rear. And uh, I think I think this one might. Like, I don't think more weight in the rear would be would be terrible. So we'll put a, put a one pound battery back there. He likes climbing over big, tall rocks. That's... I don't know something about the TRX Ford gearbox. It's got a, uh... it's got a very diesely. It's got a very diesely sound. How much drag brake do you have with six wheels? All the drag brake. There's an ant on my hat again. Jesus. Okay, I'm, I'm not near any trees. I don't... It's like they're magic. So, before this rambles on into something significantly longer than it should be, Jolly Green and I, uh, thank you for joining us uh, to see what's going on. Uh, as far as coursework went, um, it was basically like to get ready for the rift stuff. Like I get what, what, what we grew up calling a hula hoe. It's called a weeding hoe. Uh, this was all weeding hoe and rake to just pull all of this down. And then I started scooping up the debris to get rid of it in the wheelbarrow. There's about seven or eight piles out here. And uh, I just, I just never got around to doing it. Uh, I was tired and I'd had an, oh, speaking of, I mean, yeah, I got about six of those. So, so there you have it. There's where the course sits. There's where the rigs sit. And still considering, do I, do I, do I miss the two speed. I think I think he's still plenty fast enough with uh with with the two speed in there, I think he'd be pretending to be the rift and uh I've already got a rift. So so we're going to try to keep the two sort of separate from one another. So thanks for tuning in everybody. Um You'll see what uh, it will be taking up most of my upcoming week, if not all of my upcoming week. Uh, I, I think I'm going to lead off. I'm, I'm going to try to get that rift put together a little better, a little more crawling capable. Uh, I'll, I'll try to get the links finalized for that guy that's going to run the other K10s. We'll have two K10 bodies here. And then... Uh, 
I'm, 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 I'm going to try to get a replacement for this body ordered uh, as, as soon as possible because I really want to build the bed for this. Um, and I need, I need the, the body to be the right wing. Ah, oh, look at that bumper, huh? Yeah, I think I've pretty much decided I'm going to build the rear bumper delete. That'll be mine. And I'm going to build the front bumper because why wouldn't I? Just touching. Found the one spot I can manage to high center it. Go another inch this way. Yeah, right there. There's perfectly betwixt the wheelbase. So, again and again, thanks for watching. Um, leave a comment below. Subscribe if you haven't. Watch some old ones. Tune in for the next one. And as uh, per usual, have a good weekend, everybody.